Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk to you how we can execute Unix commands from within Jupyter, or if you prefer, from within IPython, its textual counterpart, but I'm going to be using Jupyter here. Now, what do I mean by running Unix commands? Well, normally if I'm using Jupyter, I'm going to put in some Python, print hello out there, and I'll run it, or I'll maybe put down some mark down there. Now, this is a title, and this is some text. Great. And most of the time, what I'm going to have in my Jupyter Notebooks is indeed going to be Python code or Markdown documentation. But there are times when I'm coding and I want to interact with the outside world. I want to run a command on the file system. I want to run a command through the operating system. And it's just kind of convenient if I don't have to leave Jupyter in order to do that. And so the way that I can do that is if I put exclamation point at the start of a line, the rest of the line is run on the command line in a shell. Now I should add, I'm using a Mac. If you do this on a Mac, if you do this on Linux or any other Unix system, you'll be totally fine. This does kind of sort of work on Windows, but I don't honestly know that much about Windows. I've heard it is used in some niche facilities out there. So if you're one of the few people using Windows out there, I'm sorry, I can't help you so much. If you're one of the overwhelming majority using Unix, you're in the right place. Okay. Sarcasm aside, if I now say exclamation point ls, what's going to happen? It's going to show me the contents of the current directory. And truth be told, I put myself in the slash etc directory here so that I'll have a lot of files to work with and play with. Now, what happened? I ran ls. It opened up a new process, ran ls there, and then printed the results on the screen. And that's kind of annoying because if they're printed on the screen, how can I use them? What can I do with them? Well, it turns out that I can actually put that command, and I can use any Unix command I want, I can put that command on the right side of assignment. So if I say here, output equals exclamation point ls, now we don't see anything on the screen. If I say, well, what is output? We get a list of strings. Pretty snazzy, right? And then I can go through that list of strings and do whatever I want with it. We're going to get back to that in just a moment, but I just want to show you one or two other things about this exclamation point thing. Let's say I want to get the first 10 lines of Etsy password. So I can say here, exclamation point, head minus 10 at Etsy password. And sure enough, it works. Once again, we are running the command head, standard Unix command in the shell. We're passing in two arguments, minus 10, and the file name Etsy password, and it works fine. What if the name of the file is in a variable? So if I say here, file name equals Etsy password, and then I say exclamation point head minus 10, a file name, I'm gonna get back an error message saying, hey, file name does not exist. And that's true because this is passed exactly as I write it to the shell. Well, it turns out that if I put the variable name after dollar, then we're fine. So if I say here exclamation point head minus 10 dollar file name, then it actually works just fine. It does that sort of substitution that you might be familiar with if you're using like bash csh or something like that. You can also actually say point head minus 10 uh, curly braces file name. That should also work and yeah, it works as well. So you can sort of use one or the other if you prefer. I should also add that every time you run something on the in the shell use the exclamation point, it's opening a new process in the back end. So if I want to, I can say echo up dollar dollar and that's gonna show me what process ID is running behind the scenes and bang echo dollar dollar. Notice, by the way, bang is like the cool or not so cool Unix hacker way of saying exclamation point, right? So every time it's getting a new process ID, it's running in a new sub process. Why is that important? Because any environment variables I might set or any directories I might change to will have no effect because it'll happen behind the scenes. So if I say here, you know, CD to slash, and then I say bang pwd, it's going to show me that I'm still in slash etc because it only changed to slash there in that sub process. Then the sub process returned and we're back to where we were before. So don't do bang cd. Definitely, well, there are other ways to do that, such as percent cd, and we'll talk about that in another video. Okay, so now that we've seen how we can run things and how we can pass arguments, let's go back to our output. So if I say here files, you know, all files equals bang ls. So I get all those files, and what is the type of all files? Before we said it was a list, but it turns out that's not entirely true. It's an S list, a super list, da, 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 da. So what does that mean? 
a super list? Well, it turns out that it has all sorts of methods that we can use because it assumes that we're going to want to do all sorts of things with it. For example, I can say here, all files dot L, and then I get a list of strings. Well, that's kind of like what we got before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, it is. What if I do this? What if I say, so if we say here, you know, dot L returns a list of strings. Okay, but I can also say dot N, which returns a single string with all elements joined with new lines. So if I say here, like all files dot N, look at that. Now we can't read it so easily, but of course, if I were to say print of this thing, well, then it'll look nice, right? So if you want to get everything that was output, if it's not really a list of strings, you just want to get it all that way, that's fine. Another property you can use, is you can say dot S, and this returns a single string with all elements joined by a space. So I now say print of all files.s. There we go. And now all these file names are joined by spaces. Of course, if there are spaces in your file names or space in your output in general, this is not going to be very useful. But here's the coolest one of all. Dot p. This returns a list of pathlib objects. So if I say now all files.p, I get back pathlib objects. Now what the heck is pathlib? Pathlib actually is um, a module in the Python standard library that gives you special objects that you can run all sorts of methods on for reading, writing, and you can think of everything you can do with files and directories in Python, all put into that object, into these pathlib path objects. They're super useful, super cool. And here's the other fun thing. If you say here, watch this, I'm going to say here, uh, you know, all, let's, what if I do like uh, all files equals, uh, let's do bang ls of star dot blah 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 so now all files well it's going to say no matches found but what if i say now all files dot p it'll actually give me an empty list there we will only get we only get half lib object for file names that actually exist in our s list and that's pretty great it means that if you accidentally give a file name that does not exist well then you're not gonna have to worry about path lib doing something wrong there okay well, let's get all the files again. All files equals exclamation point ls. And I'm now going to say all exclamation point ls. And let's even say minus l. Minus l means long. And now I look at all files and we get all this information here. Okay, fine. What if I now say all files uh, dot fields? Fields. Well, yeah, we can see that in these long file names, we have permissions. We have, I forget what this is. I think it's like the number, number of inodes or something. You've got the user, you've got the group, you've got the size, you've got the date. So what if I say here, I want zero and minus one? Look at that. Now it's giving me back field zero and field minus one. Of course, I can pass whatever I want there. So I can say like minus two and minus, well, actually, yeah. And it's going to give me, well, that's going to give me the time or the year. That's kind of ugly. So what if I say zero, one, two? So that's going to be the username. So now I'll get, right, permissions and username and file name. So you can just pass whatever indexes you want to that and that'll work out okay. Well, wait a second. I can get the file sizes, right? So I can say like five fields of four and minus one and that'll give me the file size and then it'll give me the file name. Wouldn't it be nice, right? I'd like to sort my files by size. Well, if I've now got this field four, which is the size, maybe there's a way that I can sort them by that. And indeed, I can say all files, which is once again, that super list, and we're seeing how super it is right here. I can say dot sort based on column four. Here, I'm just gonna like move this down here so it's more appropriate there, which is field four. And sure enough, if I do that, we have things sorted. We first have everything that's of zero length, then a thousand, and then, oh, wait a second, something's not quite right here. What's going on? What's wrong here? And the answer is that it's sorting by our size, but sorting it as text. We need to sort column four, the size, as a bunch of numbers. And sorting by number rather than by text is a common mistake and a common problem. That's okay. I say sort, and then I can say nums equals true. Ta-da! And now it'll actually do it numerically. It'll turn each of these sizes into integers. Amazing, amazing, right? Yeah, I know it's pretty great. I'm going to show you one last thing here. I'm going to say all files. And then I can say dot grep, not group, dot grep. And I'm going to say here dot star 
uh, let's say, conf. So I'm just going to say I want, and grep this means using regular expressions, regex. And if you don't know regular expressions, you're probably a happier person. But actually, that's sarcasm. Again, boy, I'm just full of it today. Regular expressions are great. They're not that hard if you go to, um, um, what's it called? Regex crash course.com. Then I have a 14 day email course on regular expressions. You can learn them. You should learn them. Let's just stick with the ones we have here. So if I grep dot star conf dollar, that means all files that end with uh, conf. And sure enough, I get all the files ending with dot conf. What if I want all of the files that end with something other than dot conf? Well, then I can say I can do exactly the same thing. Except I can say here, prune equals, not prime, prune equals true. And then it'll flip the logic and I'll get everything that is not ending with conf. Anyway, I have found these to be super, super useful when I'm working with Jupyter or IPython. Um, it allows me to work within this system instead of going back and forth and back and forth with the Unix shell. I hope you enjoyed this and this was useful. Let me know your best suggestions uh, tips and tricks for working with Jupyter and IPython. I'll be back more soon. I'll be back with more videos soon having to do with Jupyter, Python, and Pandas. Hope to hear from you soon. See you soon as well.